The Ruby Key by Holly Lyle. The battle began on offering night, and the moon was full, and the nightlings had the right to enter the village and take the offerings the villagers left on Treaty Rock. Jenna and Dan made their offerings and went back to their home, gathered buckets, and walked into the Forbidden Forest. Three years before, their father had gotten sick with a saku, a plague that caused confusion, wandering, and delusions. One night, while the family was asleep, he quietly walked out and they'd never seen him again. Their mother was now sick with the same disease, and the sap of the tandu tree was the only chance they had left. Jenna and Dan found a tree, inserted the taps, and sat down to wait for the buckets to fill. They heard the voices of nightlings that surrounded them, angry, frightened, and incomprehensible. But then, one voice spoke to them, a voice like the most beautiful music in the world, she explained to them that their father's best friend had made a bargain with Lord Lettrin, the Nightling's ruler, but he'd been unable to give Lord Lettrin everything he'd promised. Now, the Nightling Lord was willing to make another bargain, this time with Jenna and Dan. The ruler of the Nightlings was no benevolent leader. His people were slaves, existing only to serve him. Jenna and Dan would have to be very careful to avoid being trapped. They had to ask for the ruby key, the only object that could help guarantee their success. Then, the nightlings who were tired of Lord Lettrin's rule would help them complete their tasks and remove Lettrin from his throne. The way would not be easy. But if they were able to travel their road to its end, their friends, their families, and everyone in the village would be safe.